Hello and welcome to Pickwell High School for tonight's sectional final matchup between the Rusi Raiders and the Botkins Trojans. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Darren Gilbert. And Gil, we got a great matchup tonight against two teams that are familiar with each other, but tournament time, everything changes. Oh, you know what? I want to call it March Madness as we almost got hit with the ball right there. But uh, no, it's tournament time and a lot of Lima Land doesn't get an opportunity to see the Shelby County League schools play as well as Rusi and you know, throw the records out the window. It's zero and zero. They're familiar with one another. No matter if it was a one-point loss or a 50-point win, it's tournament time, baby, and it's it's one and done. Let's take a look at tonight's keys of the game, starting with the Botkins Trojans. For Botkins, let's lean on the senior leadership, attempt to take the pressure off the younger players, and the older players have been on the big stage before having made deep tournament runs. Be mentally strong, Rushi is so aggressive at both ends of the floor. They want to physically wear you down and mentally challenge your uh, challenge their opponent. And Rushi's defensive pressure points, I think it's uh, imperative that Botkins be able to adjust to their pressure packages. They're doing full court, three quarter court, half court. They're also trapped that initial first pass. And Rushi had a great season came away with the two seed because of it. What do they got to do tonight to advance? Well, I think number one, you got to contain the Poi. The Poi is the player of the year in the Shelby County League. Carter Plyman, he does so much for the, for the ball club. He leads them in virtually all offensive categories. He can hurt you in a variety of ways. Shoot the three off the dribble, on the offensive glass, as well as find his open teammates. The 19 feet, nine inch arc, Botkins shoots a remarkable 37% as a team on threes. Seven players have 15 or more made threes on the season, and they have that anytime, anywhere mentality. And lastly, have the share and don't care mentality. What do I mean by that? Continue to play unselfishly as a unit and play for a great shot and not settle for a good shot. It is tournament time, and one of these two teams will get to take home their first trophy on the road to Dayton. When we return, we'll have tonight's starters in the opening tip. You're watching Boys High School Basketball on WOSA. Welcome back to Pickwell High School. As tonight's starters are being announced, we'll take a look at the starting five for each team, starting first with the Botkins Trojans. They're going to start number 21, Brant Berger, number one, Colin Dosick. 24, Jordan Herzog, number zero, Carter Plyman, and number two, Rylan Paul. For the Rushi Raiders, they're going to start number 24, Braylon Cordonier, number 12, Hayden Quinter, number 34, Xavier Flippo, number two, Zane Shappy, and number 13, Braden Monin. The Botkins Trojans are coached by Philip Groves, a 15-9 overall record, 7-5 in the Shelby County Athletic League this season. Points per game just under 50, holding opponents to 43 a game, a low of 21. The Rushi Raiders, they are going to be led by coach Spencer Cordonier. See the record there, tremendous uh, regular season for the Raiders, averaging over 60 points a game, and that defense is stout, holding teams to under 40 as the opening tip is up, and it'll be controlled by Rushi. Nate Garlock alongside Darren Gilbert. And, you know, you've had an opportunity to see uh, these teams a couple of times this year. And this Rushi Raider team is stout with a lot of talent, and they are going to be a tremendous foe tonight for the Raider, or for the Trojans. Excuse they're, me. they're very deep. They play exceptionally hard, and they will make you earn everything when they're at the defensive end of the floor. Long rebound couldn't be gathered in. Basketball is going to go back, or excuse me, going to go to Botkins for the first time tonight. Here's a great luxury to have when you have a six foot five inch point guard. Carter Plyman brings it up for Botkins. He's going to pass it off. Three pointer on its way. That one's going to be no good as Brant Berger couldn't connect on his first shot. So both teams have had an offensive possession and they've come up empty. And you mentioned it in the pregame the three point shot is going to be big here tonight. And both those offenses let it fly there on their first possession. The Botkins settling in at the defensive end in a 2 3 matchup. Zane Shappy attacks the rim, can't get that one to go down. Botkins hurry up in transition. Three-point try off the back of the iron. Shappy can't come up with the rebound, ends up in the hands of Quinter. 
Hayden Quinter is going to bring it up. No one's going to come over to challenge, so he's going to go all the way to the rim, and he'll get the first basket of the night. Yeah, he is so strong with his upper body and finishes it very aggressively at the rim. Nice shot right there. So here's Dozik with the left hand. He's going to spin, try to get to the lane. Has to go somewhere with the basketball. Nice cut. Good ball movement by the Trojans, but they can't cash in. Yeah, they've had some really, really good looks earlier. Just can't get him to drop. Holden hands it off as the Raiders right now comfortable moving this one around the perimeter, not looking to go inside. Not really even much of a flash on the end there. Working around the screens, trying to see if they can't get something coming from the perimeter to an open lane. Long pass going to be cut off. Great anticipation by Berger as he was able to get the steal. Climbing on the other side with the Euro step. Shot is up, no good. Herzog had it knocked away, going to fight for the loose ball, and it'll end up in the hands of Manin. And that's exactly what Rushi does. They are just so aggressive with their hands. They just picked his pocket right there. Winter attacks. He can't get that one to go down right now as both offenses back and forth. They've each had some pretty good looks, and they've had them close. They just can't get them to go down. Flyman baseline down into the corner. Shot on its way. That one's no good. Long pass. Up the court to Quinter. Quinter going through the double team. Has it poked away, and we're going to have our first foul of the game. Yeah, I think they got Berger on that one on the reach in. Grant Berger picks up his first foul, team's first foul. As Rushi will take this one out of bounds. Looks like we got our first sub of the game, too. Berger out. Colton Plyman in. 6'4", sophomore. See Botkins coming out in the 2-3 zone. Trying to make sure that they force Rushi well away from that three-point line. Tried to go inside that time, but Plyman does a nice job of working him off the block. Cutting through. Monin gets it to go down for two. Yeah, they're two shot opportunities. They were able to put the ball on the floor and get into those seams and get that little short mid-range. Here's Plyman trying to create some space. Got some extension with that right arm, and he'll pick up the offensive foul. That is going to be Plyman's first, team second. As you see the replay there of the, excuse me. You got to keep that wing in. If you don't keep that wing in, extend it nine times out of ten, you're going to get called for that offensive push off. Saw the replay of Monin's basket the last time Rushi was on this end of the floor. Looking to see if they can't come away with points once again as they have the 4-0 lead. Carter Plyman comes up with the rebound, and now we're going to have the foul. It looks like Hayden Quinter just picked up his first. Really nice job by Colton Plyman coming in and just walling up and maintaining his ground there. They've just got to get a shot to fall. If they can get a shot to fall right here, you're going to see the confidence level go up and also they're going to play a little bit more relaxed. Plyman looking for somewhere to go. Needs an outlet. Finally finds it in Jordan Herzog. Now there's Colton Plyman with the basketball. Looking for a cutter. Can't find it. Good defense by the Raiders. Finally gets it off to a teammate. As Colin Dosick couldn't handle the pass but it ends up off the hands of a Raider. So Botkins is going to be able to maintain possession. Really good cut from away from the ball there by Dosa. Quick story about him. He played JVs the first half of the season. That's how far he's come along. And with him coming along that far, you could tell Botkins is a better basketball team with him on the court. Lyman tries the baseline pass down to the corner again. This one gets knocked out of bounds. Number 22, Vince Borchers has come back into the, or come into the game for Rushi. Yeah, he plays with a very, very high motor. Here's Carter Plyman trying to trigger the inbounds. Has to go out wide to Dosik. Gets it right back. Thought about the shot. Going to take it baseline. Nice adjustment around the defender to get it in for the first two points of the night for Botkins. Yeah, really athletic play, but a very high basketball IQ play also. Not trying to run over anybody. Now the Raiders down on offense. Donner has to get rid of it. Back up top. As Rushi continues to work that perimeter, looking for a good look. 
Down in the corner, three-pointer is up, and this one is good. Braden Monin comes in with the three. Nice dribble drive, kick to the corner there, spot up three. Big bucket there. Lyman gets cut off as he tries to take it inside, has to get rid of it. Rushi on top, 7-2. Under three minutes left to go here in the opening quarter. Plyman pulls up, has that one rejected. Raiders look to push the tempo. Here's Quinter. He's getting in the lane, has that one swatted away as Colton Plyman was able to get his hand on it, and it'll stay with Rushi. Young man's given pretty solid minutes, huh, since he's come in the game. Done a nice job owning that lane. Clogging up some space and a good job that time to get the rejection without picking up the foul. I really like Quinter's game. He doesn't settle for the perimeter. He wants to get into the paint and either get it to the rim or get it to a teammate spotting up. Had some contact that time as Dozik looked like he might have been fortunate not to get the whistle. Rushi able to maintain possession. Three-point try on its way. No good as Braden Monin comes up just short. Lyman, he's going to pull up. He'll get fouled. He was close to that three-point line, but I think he was just inside of it. So he will make a trip to the free-throw line to shoot two. Yeah, I think they got Francis, Felix Francis, across the arm there. They do as Francis picks up his first. It'll be the team's second for the Raiders as Plyman lines up his first free throw. Shot is up. That one rattles in and then out. About halfway down, as you can see on the replay, it was awfully close as Plyman stepped back. It looked like maybe just his toes were on that line. But either way, Plyman not able to connect on the first free throw. What a huge stat, 150 free throw attempts for that young man, converting 90 at 60%. He did split them, though, didn't he? So Plyman makes it a 7-3 game as Arushi comes down one more time. They've done a nice job on offense, good ball movement. They've given themselves some looks, just haven't had as much success as they would like. Borchers calls the offense, hands it off, gets it back. Borchers back up to the top. As Rushi, very comfortable with that ball movement around the perimeter. Nice stop that time by Monin, not able to connect. Rebound comes down to the Trojans. As Carter Plyman just kept his foot down, not to pick up that travel call. Trojans looking for somebody else to step up besides Plyman. Noah Top, he had come into the game for Bodkins. So we're going to have a foul as he tried to get inside. As this foul is going to go on. I think they got Borchers, I believe. Vince Borchers with the slap, yep, on the replay. On the nice nice camera work there. Yeah, he got him on this, across the arm. And again, one of the keys, you know, for Botkins is they got to be mentally tough because Rushi's not going to change your game plan, partner. They're going to come at you defensively and slap at the basketball and use their chest and knock down those cut, cuts and cutters. Number three, J.J. Meyer coming into the game for Botkins. Botkins trying to get something going on offense here. They had some pretty good looks at it. They've just been a little bit off trying to make that adjustment here. Meyer, three-point try on its way, and it rattles down. J.J. Meyer off the bench for a big three-pointer. Yeah, Mr. Meyer coming in into the game, trying to take a look at his numbers here. Chappie keeps it himself, able to split the defenders and gets that layup to go in. Tough shot for him. 16 threes for J.J. Meyer, 44% clip. Plyman comes back down on the other side, turn around, no good, tried to get it off the backboard. Rushi comes up with the rebound and they're gonna settle. Coach. 25 seconds left to go here in the opening quarter. It looks like Rushi's gonna go ahead and hold on to this one and try to take the last shot. Great heads up play by Dosik. Caught the Raiders napping, puts it in for two. Well, not only did he 
slapped, he slapped with the ball. He didn't slap back. He just took it out of their hands. It was great anticipation, as you can see Let's on the replay. Re oh, what a great play. Shappy, he recognized that Shappy had all of his focus on the coach, and he took that one all the way in. A great momentum swing here at the end of the first quarter for the Trojans. So have some substitutions in and out for both teams as we got too many jerseys, I think, of both on at one point. But they got it sorted out. And with 10.2 seconds left to go, Roosh is going to look for some points. Shappy going to have to put it up. Three seconds, drops it off. Cordonier's shot, no good. Rebound ends up in the hands of the Trojans. And it took a while, but the Botkins Trojans found a way to get things going. And they're going to go into the second down, but with all the momentum on their side. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard is presented by Charles River and Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Bobkins begins the second quarter with the basketball. On the heels of a tremendous heads-up play by Colin Dosick there at the end of the first quarter. Great hustle play on the, on the defensive side, though, as... Hayden Quinter flew in, got that basketball, and as he was going out of bounds, flung it back as it went. ended up then going out of bounds on a Bobkins player. Smart basketball play there. Zane Shappy brings it up for Rushi. They have the one-point lead here early in the second. Shappy drops it off. Quick ball movement for Rushi. Trying to see if they can't get this zone defense out of position. Good find on the inside. Quinter has to get rid of it. It's Flippo drops it off. Shot is on its way. That one's no good. As Plyman's going to come up with the rebound and push it up ahead. Herzog gets cut off, kicks it back out. This is Colton Plyman. Ryland Paul now back in the game for Botkins. Drops it down. Rushi almost comes up with their own steal on that side. We're going to have a foul on the floor. at two Raiders around him. We'll see who they give this one to. Yeah, when he goes down into that post, you're going to see Rushi double team right there, partner, every time. What strength there by Plyman, though, to maintain composure and keep the basketball and draw the foul. That foul was assessed at number 13, Braden Monin. That is the team's fourth foul here in the first half. Carter gets it into Colton and then gives it back. Looked like Plyman thought about the three-pointer there for a second, but decides to put it on the floor. Gets cut off as he goes baseline. Colton tracks that one down. Nice cut to the inside. Good find. Herzog fighting through some traffic. Does a great job of bodying the defender and then getting up for two. Yeah, he protected that basketball very well. He took his shoulders and squared him up, put the ball between him and the backboard and finished it. So Bobkins has their first lead of the game. They're on top, 10-9. Brucey trying to answer. Flippo gets cut off on the baseline. Has to find somebody. Has a cutting teammate in Ben York. And we're going to have a timeout on the floor. Botkins on top, 10 to 9, 606 left to go here in the half. We'll step aside and be back on WOSA. Welcome back to Piqua High School, where the Botkins Trojans are on top, a 10 to 9 on the Charles River scoreboard. Rushi takes the timeout. They're going to inbounds from underneath their own basket. Coming out of the timeout, you just kind of feel like all that momentum is right now in the corner of Bodkins. Rusi trying to get a little bit of that back here. Well, I think part of that is, you know, they're neutralizing Rusi with this 2-3 zone. Going to have a foul on the floor as Colin Dosick gets tied up with Ben York. So Dosick going to pick up his first third team foul for the Trojans. York going to take the basketball out for the Raiders. So Rushi got off to a good start there in the first quarter. Jumped out to the early five-point lead. And now a double dribble call as Botkins continues to cause some issues here 
for the Rushi Raiders on offense. Do you remember you asked me what style does Rushi like to play? Up and down. What are they having to play right now? Having to play that half court yep. slowed down offense and you can see it causing some problems. The Bodkins is doing a nice job offensively. They're not trying to force anything either. They're fine with long possessions. And we've seen those to start to finally pay off here as we move through the second. Well, they're keeping their composure. You know, they're mentally into it at both ends of the floor. When you saw, too, when those shots didn't start falling there in that first quarter, they didn't panic, they didn't start firing up bad shots. They just kept to the plan. And so far here, it's paying off. Dosik up top right around midcourt, working against Shappy. Has to get rid of it. Plyman looking to the inside, gets it off to Herzog. Herzog going to rope. Going to work, roll baseline. Good help defense by the Raiders. Forces this one back out. Lyman decides to keep it himself. Pulls up from the free throw line, and he gets two more. Got the ball right where the defense does not want you to have it, and that's into the middle of the lane. Another turnover for the Trojans, as that 2-3 zone defense right now is just causing all sorts of issues for Rushi. If you're going to get the ball to the high post, you got to get it from, you got to go side to side and then get it from one of the wing areas. It's awful hard to throw that straight line pass from the top of the key directly down into the high post. Here's Plyman, long three pointer on its way. That one's going to be no good. Rebound comes down to Rushi. Shappy pushes it up for the Raiders. Here's York. He's going to cut through. Shappy's going to try to get this one back up. And you know, once again, Rushi has had to slow things down and play a half-court set. Shappy's three-point try is good. Zane Shappy had a lot of space there. It was a deep three, but well within his range. 33%. That's his 26th on the year for that young man. We are all tied at 12 with under four left to go in the half. Herzog trying to spin. Good pivot. Leaves that one off the front of the rim, and then we're going to have a foul call. Herzog will be whistled for the foul. It'll be the fourth on the Trojans. Just the first for Herzog. Three forty-one left to go. As we have some more substitutions coming into the game, Felix Francis checks back in. Shappy trying to work through the screen. They drop it down to Francis. He gets it out of the double team. Almost thrown away, but gathered back in. And right now, Rusi, they, they tried, they're trying to find the soft spot of that mm -hmm. zone, but they are just not having any luck. And they're just having to continue to pass and then reverse around that perimeter with nothing going on the inside. They just don't look comfortable right now. No, they don't. They just seem like they're out of sync a little bit. Nice block here by Herzog. Herzog sends it the other way. Dosik on the run out. Gets that one to go down for two. Yeah, you've got to open up that zone. The two, the, the three guys along the baseline for Botkins. And to do so, you either got to get it right there at the high post. Can't connect on that one. Carter Plyman goes up high, gets that rebound. Dosik. Thought about driving, decides to pull it back out. Carter Plyman will get the offense going. The other thing I was going to say is get the ball to the dead spot also, which is known as the short corner. Herzog loses the basketball, gets it back. Dosik gets up, gets it down into the corner. Here's Herzog. He's going to try it again. Right hand off the glass, and it's good. Yeah, he protected the basketball with that left shoulder and took it up strong and finished it. Quinter, he's going to drive baselines, met by Herzog. Herzog gets his hand on the basketball, but Quinter does a great job of getting that one back, going up strong, and comes away with two. Yeah, that's that upper body strength and finishing around the rim. Didn't get it the first time, got it the second, made sure it went in. Hand off to Berger, back to Herzog. As he kicks it over to Paul. Lyman's three-point, no good. And then a fight for the rebound between two Raiders. 
goes out of bounds, and the basketball will stay with Bodkins. See J.J. Meyer coming back into the game for Bodkins, as does Vince Borchers for Arushi. Colton Plyman takes the inbounds. Gets it back up to Carter, who passes it out. And that one was almost taken away as Dosik just able to get his hands on it. And he is, he is trying to find Colton down low. And the Raiders knock this one out of bounds once again. 125 left to go here in the half. Two-point Botkins lead. They have the basketball. Dosik gets rid of it. Plyman works with the left hand, gets into the lane. Double team comes, passes out of it. Dosik all alone for three. He rattles that one down. What a pass by the Shelby County Player of the Year right there. Getting into the paint, saw the double team coming, found the teammate in the corner for the big three. Five-point lead for the Trojans now. Pass up top. Quinter goes to the inside. Cordarner kicks it back out. Three-pointer for the Raiders is good. Braden Monin comes up with a big answer as Rushi needed that basket. Yeah, that's probably the best set they've run against that 2-3 matchup. They got the ball going side to side. You know, no dribbling, passing it. Found the open shot there. Big bucket, like you said. 30 seconds left to go. Almost a turnover for Botkins. And it ends up being as Quinter takes it away. He's going to go up off the glass. Quinter ties this one at 19 with 18 seconds left to go. Dosik gets it over to Plyman. Plyman looks up at the clock. Has 10 seconds to work with. Going to drive. Kicks it down to the corner. Long pass. Berger has to get rid of it. Dosik trying to work through the screen. Gets cut off. Two seconds. Meyer throws it up. No foul. That one doesn't connect on anything. And the first half comes to a close. After the first half of action, we head to the locker rooms all tied at 19. We'll step aside and be back with the second half on WOSN. Welcome back to Piqua High School. Second half underway here as Rushi comes out of the locker room and gets the first two points on the board as they take the two-point lead. I'd like to thank tonight's scoreboard sponsor, Charles River. Let's take a look at the Charles River scoreboard. All tied up as we started this half, but Rushi has come out and they've had a different kind of energy as they have a turnover right away. As you see, Quinter can't connect. Rushi with another opportunity. Dosik reaches in there, takes that one away. We'll have a jump ball. Yeah, can you tell <laughs> they're playing with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder and an attitude, aren't they, coming out at halftime? Can only imagine the message that was going on in that locker room, and at least here, and you know, this first minute of play, it does definitely look like Rushi has a more sense of an urgency than they did there in the first half. Well, and if you're Botkins, you know, just, again, play within yourself and stay mentally strong. Here's Quinter up top. As Botkins able to settle down into that 2-3 zone. That one gets poked away, gathered back in. Ryland Paul reached in there to kick it free. Shappy's three-point try is good. His second one of the game. As Rushi now on top five. Number 27 on the season for that young man. Here's Plyman. He gets cut off. Going to spin back. Great job getting to the basket, but leaves that one short. Sort of short armed that one. There goes Rushi. That's what they love to do. Winter does a nice job of pushing that one up. Finds Flippo underneath. And Botkins wants to take the quick timeout. Flippo finishes at the rim. Rushi out to a big lead here to start this third quarter. And Botkins not happy as Coach Grove wants to talk to his team. Taking a look at the bracket, tonight's winner will head to UD in the district to play the winner of Cedarville, Springfield, Central Catholic. And another two high quality teams. And well, we've seen them. Remember, we've seen Springfield, Central Catholic with Botkins, me and you down at uh, 
Fairmont, I believe, a couple years ago. Oh, yes, you're right. You're and correct, Cedarville yeah. is very good. That was Botkins on their road to their state championship that they're just several years removed from. And, you know, it's interesting, you know, um, I spend a lot of my time up north. I don't get down to these south brackets too right. often. And it, it's interesting when you see going, you know, everybody knows as you move through, you move to new sites, right? As you see there, the winner of tonight gets to go play at UD. How big of an advantage could that be if you keep winning, Good you point. find yourself down there here Good in a point. couple of weeks? You know, you don't have to get used to anything. You don't have to get used to backdrops, a new setting. I mean, that can be a huge advantage for one of those teams getting to play in that district. Uh, absolutely. So Botkins, is, like I said, takes the time out. They needed to regroup. Coach Grove, a little bit of a shell shot coming out of that locker room as Rushi has come out firing on all cylinders. You see Rushi quickly into this full court press as well. Carter Plyman works the basketball up into the front court. Tries to spin back, has to get rid of it. Here's Paul. Back over to Berger. Colt Plyman into the game. Gave Bonkin some quality minutes there in the first half. Plyman in some trouble, has this one poked away. Cordonier all the way in, gets that one to go down. Anytime Carter Plyman tries to go down into the post, it's an automatic double down and a rotation. And that one, he just didn't get quite enough mustard on it, and it was stolen and taken for full length of the floor for a layup for the Raiders. 9-0 run here to open the third quarter for Rushi. Dosik trying to answer, gets into the lane off the glass, no good. Rebound comes down to Flippo. Right idea, just a tough shot. Credit Rushi on the defensive wall up. Dane Chappie now going to slow things down, pulls it back around midcourt, waits for instructions to come from the bench. Quinter guarded tightly by Paul. We're going to have a foul as Ryland Paul is going to pick up his first. It'll be the team's first of the half. 28-19, 5-15 left to go here in the third. Rushi with the basketball. Shappy thought about going baseline, has to pull it back out. Dosik playing tight defense. Long pass back up top, ends up into the hands of Mata. He's going to work with the left hand, got to the free throw line, almost lost it, able to gather it back in as he's going to pass it back up, and now it's going to be Rushi that takes the timeout. Coach Cardinia not happy. We'll step aside and we'll be back on WOSA. It's the big spot for Botkins. That defense needs to hold. Great slip pass underneath. Flippo puts another one in for two. All started with Quinter and his ability to get down the lane for the easy dump off and bucket at the rim. We started this quarter all tied at 19. Paul's three-pointers rejected. Plyman able to gather that one in. Great heads-up play by Carter Plyman and some much-needed points for the Trojans. Yeah, sure was. He, he saw the ball get blocked from his teammate. He aggressively went after it and finished it. Strong move to the inside. Quinter couldn't connect on the first one. His teammate with the offensive rebound gives him a second opportunity. And Hayden Quinter cashes in that time and makes it a 32-21 game. Big play there by Xavier Flippo. Long pass. Going to be another turnover for the Trojans, who right now are reeling and can't quite find a way to kind of settle things down. Flippo's going to take it out for Rushi. Ends up getting it in to Shappy, works up top against Dosik. You know, if you're Rushi, this is what you want. You want to see your opposition go man to man. Berger came up with a big steal, but has it taken right back. Shappy saves it, ends up back into the hands of the Trojans. Dosik kicks it out. Top feeds Plyman on the inside. Plyman with the right hand. Can't get it to go down, but he's going to make a trip to the free throw line. Nice move by Carter Plyman on the inside, working through some traffic and through some contact. Let's take a look at our instant replay. Yeah, that's one of those he wished he had back, huh? I think he was counting on that one going in. He took it up strong, protected the basketball. Plyman lines up his first shot. It is up, and it is good, not good. He left that one just short. 
you know, when he goes on, and I'm sure he's going to play at the next level, you know, there's going to be schools looking at him. Those free throws, those are going to, those are going to improve, partner. He's going to get bigger. He's going to get stronger. Vince Borchers, Felix Francis coming into the game for the Raiders as Carter Plyman is able to connect on his second free throw. Ten-point game, 32-22. 3.20 left to go here in the third. 2-2-1, three-quarter court by the Trojans. Bobkins trying to create some extra possessions. J.J. Meyer back into the game for Trojans. Raymond Monin pulls it back up. Gets it in the hand of Borcher. Borcher guarded by Myers. Gets it into the inside. Gets it right back. Here goes Quinter. He's going to go through one more time. Has this one rejected by Berger. And after a second chance opportunity, the Raiders can't cash in. Botkins now coming with a full head of steam. Dosick kicks it down into the corner. Tops three-point try on its way in. Good. Noah Top with his first points of the game comes on the back of a big three-pointer. All started with Herzog with the big block and pinning it off the glass and then getting it down the floor and hitting a big three in the corner. Herzog slides over. Looked like he might have, he was trying to get his feet set there to take that charge. And instead, he's going to get whistled for the foul, and that'll be the second on Jordan Herzog. Let's take a look at the replay. Let's see if he's, yeah, he's airborne already. He can't slide underneath him. Right idea, just a little bit too late. So Braylon Cordonier comes to the free throw line. He has only two points on the night. Leaves that one a little bit long. Six foot three sophomore lines up his second shot. This one is good. Rushi not still uh, coming up with that full court press. They leave, let Watkins bring it up into the front court. Meyer a little hard on that pass, just saved by Dosik as it goes out of bounds. A last touch by the Raiders. Shappy come back into the game, as does Flippo. Noah Top has it out of bounds for Botkins. As Carter Plyman's going to bring it up. Nice find along that baseline, but Doza couldn't handle the pass. Gets it back to Plyman. Great footwork and a spin move, but he can't finish. Tough break right there because he did everything except make it. Cardano into the paint. Great some space. Working hard against Herzog, and he gets that to go in. And it wasn't bad defense, just a better play offensively. Like you said, creating a little space with his shoulder, enough to get enough room to finish. Pull-up jumper by Plyman, no good. Borchers flies in there for the rebound. Gets it up into the front court for the Raiders. Meyer playing tight defense. Borchers gets through it. In the lane, kicks it back out. Shappy all alone. Great find down low. Vince Borchers able to finish at the rim after great ball movement and a spectacular pass underneath as Shappy had gotten the defenders off the floor. We have a timeout. We'll step aside and be back on WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Charles River and Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. So another timeout by the Trojans as they have seen this lead grow to 12. Under a minute left to go here in the quarter. Dosik with the basketball. Gets it over to Meyer. Meyer, he's going to drive, pulls it back out, going get to get trapped down there in the corner on the double team. Trying to get it down low to Herzog, going to go out of bounds and back to the Raiders. Yeah, he's got to come all the way across the block. He had the right idea. It's just a tough angle. You're throwing that pass along the baseline. Shorten the angle up a little bit, the right idea. 43.2 seconds left to go here in the third. 
Rushi is taking control of this game. Botkins comes out with some pressure. The Raiders able to get out of it. Shot is up and good as Ben York comes away with his first two points of the night. Made a nice catch on a difficult pass right there. Not only did he make the nice catch, made a nice little finish from about six feet. Top and just thought about the three-pointer, decides to get rid of it. Now it's going to be Plyman's turn. Eight seconds left to go. Dosick, long pass. Noah Top, three-pointer on its way. That one's no good. Chase down the rebound. Going to have to shoot it. And he cannot get a shot off before the quarter comes to a close. We were tied at 19 to start the quarter. The Raider offense comes alive, and they have the 14-point lead. We'll step aside and be back with the fourth quarter on WOSN. Welcome back to Piqua High School. Taking a look at the final Shelby County Athletic League standings. You can see Jackson Center, the AP number three ranked team on top, tied with the, these Rushi Raiders, both at 11-1, both having tremendous seasons. Jackson Center, 23-1 on the season. Rushi, 21-3. And that game tomorrow night's not going to be an easy one. That's going to be a tussle tomorrow night. Fort Army and Jackson Center and... WOSN's going to cover that one, too, from here at Piqua. Take a look at the region, uh, region breakdown on that bracket play. Jackson Center for Lorme, as you mentioned. Winner of that, a moving on. Plyman trying to create some space. That one's going to be no good. You know, Bobkins, we didn't quite get down to them, but they finished third in the conference. They had a good season as well, 7-5. Shelby County Athletic lead always tremendously difficult. A great league with some great competition. And for Jackson Center and Rushi to come away with just one loss of a piece in league play just tells you a lot about their teams and the year that they had. Well, it speaks a lot about Botkin's character because I'll tell you what, there was a night that they had played somebody and just didn't play very well and got it handed to them pretty good. And the kids didn't quit. They came back to practice and gutted it out and they put 15 wins on the, the board going into tonight's game. That's a tribute to their character and their work ethic. Paul ends up with that rebound down into his hands, but the Raiders come away with this. Flippo able to get the steal. Quinter working against Paul, has to get rid of it, and now it's going to be Shappy. This is what's, oh, I'm sorry, partner. This is what's going to be tough for Botkins is because Rushi is so unselfish with the basketball. We've seen it on the dribble drive and the little dump offs for layups. So, you know, this is going to be tough here. This is where Rushi's just going to continue to play unselfish and play for that, you know, solid, great shot. Well, and you talked about it in the first half. We talked about the style of play that Rushi would want to play. We knew they'd want to be up-tempo, but Bobkins had really forced them out of that. They were having to play a more of a – a half-court type of offense. They couldn't get quite the ball movement they wanted as Dosick comes away with a nice steal. But then he gets, has it taken away by Quinter. And we're going to have another foul, this one on Colin Dosick. But they obviously, when they got into the locker room, they must have talked a lot about that offensive plan because they came out immediately, picked up that tempo, started going faster, and that led them to uh, that 9-0 run to start the quarter. And just a great defensive play there oh. as Quinter just didn't Quinter, quit. Quinter, he didn't quit, you know, and he's been the difference, in my opinion, tonight at both ends of the floor. He set the tone for Rushi. And I'm not talking just by, you know, the points, but by the little things. Quinter has eight points on the night, but as you mentioned, it is all the little things that he has done to help this team. Three-pointer goes down by Monin as he has been quiet here for a while. It comes up with a big shot to make this a 42-25 game. Played the game inside out. Got it down to the post. Kicked it out. Open three. Shot is up and good for Plyman. That's Carter Plyman trying to keep his team in this one. Pass down into the corner. Three-point try on its way. No good. Plyman comes up with the rebound. Six minutes left to go. Plyman going to drive. Kicks it back out. Paul's three-point try. No good. Chases down his rebound. Gets it over to Dosik. Dosik's going to try for three. That one's going to be short. 
But Herzog was left all alone underneath, able to fight through the arms of Chappie and gets that one up for two. Big rebound there by Herzog. 42-29, Botkins wants the timeout again as Rushi has the lead, but Botkins is trying to find some way to stay in this one and claw their way back. Well, you know, the timeout, I'm sure he's probably trying to keep, you know, the, the players fresh. You can see that the style of play now with Rushi getting up down the floor and the exertion of the effort that Botkins has given defensively, you could see some huffing and puffing going on there. Take a look at the final AP rankings. Division three, Ottawa Glendorf, number one in the state, once again having a tremendous year. But look at Division four and look how well represented this area of the state is. Year in and year out, we talk about a lot of people, yeah, they, they talk about how spoiled we are and how much great basketball we get to see. Three, five, six, seven, and nine. Five teams in the top ten of the AP final state rankings, all Division four, all from our area. There's just so much tremendous basketball that happens from where we are. Well, it's just a shame because some of those teams are going to get knocked off and not get that opportunity to get to Dayton. Yeah, there are times where you'll see sectional final matchups that it's just a shame that you have two high-ranked teams and they're going to have to, one of them's going to have to go home. Going to have uh, going to have some contact underneath on that play as it looks like. Monin will take a trip to the free throw line. That foul is going to go on Carter Plyman. It is his second. Again, there's the dribble drive with the little dump off action. That shot is up and good. 14 points on the night. Here's that. that replay of that little dump off. Plyman just did not want to give up that position. Tried to hold his ground, but a little bit too much contact as Monin connects on both free throws. He has 15 on the night now. He's had a solid night for him, too. Lyman trying to work through that double team as Cordonier is going to get whistled for the foul. Monin coming in right now. Almost doubled his average. He's at 8.1 for the season. He's got 15 tonight. That's what you need when you talk about this tournament run and yep. how things go. We see upsets happen all the time. You know, but teams have other players step up big as Top sends a three-pointer. That one's no good. Herzog, Herzog tries to tap that rebound out to Dosik, but Colin not able to hold on. It's going to go through his hands, and the ball go back to Rushi. You know, just looking at the roster for Botkins. Two seniors on the team, Lyman and Berger. All these kids are back next year. Don't tell me that this experience of playing in this tournament is not going to benefit them next year. Here's Shappy up top as Ryland Paul comes out to challenge. Gradonier, he's going to go with the left hand. Gets cut off, has to pass it back out. Rushi right now not in much of a hurry. Knows the clock's on their side as they are only 440 away from a sectional title. Quinter. Passes it back into the corner. It looks like Rushi is more than fine with not trying to force the issue. Shappy goes in, throws that one off the glass. Gets the in one opportunity for his trouble. You want to repeat what you just <laughs> What you just said? What a shot there, high off the glass. It looked like Rushi was kind of into that stall mode as they had a couple of times they could have went to the basket, pulls it back out. The Chappie decides he had a lane, wanted to take it, took some contact. Pulled the old Kyrie Irving and got it high off the glass and knocked that one in. Yeah, I was looking at the stats. They're shooting almost 70% as a team from the free throw line. 46-29, 4 left to go here in the game. Colin Dosick going to work through. Can't get that one to go. Blyman comes in for the offensive rebound. His shot doesn't go up, and we're going to have another foul. This one is going to put Bonkins in the bonus. So Rushi's going to take a trip to the other end of the floor to shoot the one and one. Hayden Quinter will step to the line for the first time tonight. Quinter lines up his first shot. It is up and it is good. 
67% from the charity stripe, along with 12.7 points per game. Winter able to connect on his second free throw as well. As this is now a 19 point game with four minutes left to go. And it is hard to kind of quantify the tale of two halves here as Rushi has come out on a completely different mode coming out of that locker room. They have only given up 10 points here in the second half total and their offense finally got clicking. Well, it's a combination of that and they got the game to their liking which is up and down, fast paced. Aggressive defensively. Nice shot there. Meyer rattles in the three-pointer. I believe that's his second three on the night. See Herzog able to poke that one away, but it'll stay with the Raiders. As Botkin still trying here. They have some time. They can force some turnovers and get some quick shots. This one's not over yet. Flippo has to pass out of trouble, gets it right back and into the front court. Gets it down into the corner. Shaq is going to bring it up top. Rushi's going to let the offense get set. Going to have another foul. This one's going to go on Herzog. As he was trying to work against Cordonier, but could not uh, keep his hands too clear on that reach in. So he'll pick up his fourth foul of the night. You know, just looking at the free throw numbers, Quinter 67%, Cordonier 79%, Flippo 74%, Borchers just under 66%, Ben York at 83%. Connor now with six points, looking for point number seven, and he gets it. It's a nice luxury to have. Dosik brings it up quickly. Bobkins has got to try to look to qu score quickly. As we're going to have another takeaway, Herzog had his pocket picked. And Rusi brings it up. It looks like it was Quinter, partner. Dosik able to get his hands on this one's going to lead to a run out by Plyman. And he's going to be fouled and get the end one as Quinter went up to try to block that one. It circled around the rim a couple times, but finally fell. I don't think people realize how tough a shot that is when you're going in and trying to dunk the basketball and somebody's coming to grab your arm and you're strong enough to get that thing up and into that cylinder. That's a heck of a play. So Plyman at the free throw line, looking to convert the and one. He's able to get it down, and that is his 13th point of the night. He leads all of Botkin scores. Thousand point score. Had a tremendous high school career. Almost able to take that one away was Berger, but Rushi keeps it. Somebody thought about taking that three point try one more time, decides to pass it out. Dosik reaches in, he's gonna get the foul. And you're gonna see Flippo go to the free throw line. Good piece of officiating right there. Yeah, a little frustration by Colin Dosick that time. A little extra words. The official come over. Want to make sure things don't escalate. And that's going to lead to a timeout on the floor. Rushi, they are in control as they are up 15. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back to Piqua High School. The tourney 10 at 10 only on WOSN and WTLW. You get 10 games, five nights, two channels starting at, at 10 p.m. It is the greatest time of the year Love in it. this area. There are so Love many it. good games going on, so many tremendous matchups. And thankfully, WOSN and WTLW get to bring you a lot of those. So don't miss that. 2.34 a left to go here in the game. As you see Flippo take a trip to the free throw line. Last year, Botkins took out Rushi by a big score of 60 to 36. And Rushi, they're kind of on their revenge tour, trying to get that one back. What do we call that, returning the favor? <laughs> Absolutely. There were some receipts coming, and 
Rushi gets to deliver that tonight, it looks like, as they look like they will hold on to take, take away this sectional title. And, you know, this Rushi team with the skill set on this team and the personal that they have, how deep they are on the bench, they can get contributions from quite a few players. This is a team that is built for a deep run. It's dangerous. It's a, it's a dangerous team that is capable, like you said, of going on a serious tournament run. And, I mean, there's going to be some games coming up there that they're going to have to bring their A game, you know, and I think their next one, isn't it, the winner of Cedarville? And I, I, was, I thought that's what the coach told me before the game. Yeah, they have a uh, tough game next, the coaching staff said, uh, as we were talking to them during pregame. They came over with the win tonight. They were going to be on the recruiting or uh, uh, the scouting trail tomorrow night. They were going to head down to watch that game. Cedarville and Springfield Central Catholic. So that will yep. be so they'll be uh, and two highly um, you know, high quality oh, opponents. Yeah. Either team that comes away with that victory not going to be an easy game as another trip to the free throw line is coming for Xavier Flippo. Yeah, actually, both of those teams we saw them in the regionals. I thought I think they were on different years, but we saw them both down there. You see Bodkins checking out some of they are checking out their seniors as Brant Berger, Carter Plyman get a great ovation from their fans as they come out of the game and get the recognition they so deservingly um, as they so. Uh, you know the words I'm trying to say. Oh, yeah. Say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, they very much deserve that from this fan, especially for what they have brought. They have been in this program for a while. They have seen the heights of success that Botkins has had over the last four years. They've been a, a, a very integral part of that, and they very much deserve that recognition tonight. Not how they wanted their season to hey, end. Look, they won 15 games. They had a great you they know? had a good regular season, a 15-9 and nine record, 7-5 and five in the conference. They get to end their careers with the state championship. And the well, in the regional. Yep, they had a regional appearance as well. Lots of success for this team. And so you saw Coach Grove want to get them out and let these fans recognize that. Hey, real quick, partner. Just want to extend thank yous to uh, Coach Cordonier and his coaching staff for getting us the stats and everything for tonight's game, as well as Mr. Plyman. He's been very, very gracious to us. Anytime we've come down to cover Botkins, he's always got us the stats. and if we had any questions to get with him. So thank you very much, and we truly appreciate it. It makes our broadcast even better. So now Rushi getting some guys off the bench in as well. I think some guys get some minutes. See Coach Cardonier embracing his team as they come off, as this is a big win. As we mentioned, this is a revenge game. They get knocked out of the tournament last year, come back, have a great season, get a chance to kind of return the favor to Bodkins tonight as they will move on and continue their road to date. And I don't think a lot of people understand Coach Cordonier's situation. They had an unfortunate, uh, tragic accident last year before Christmas, I believe, with the head basketball coach and just a sad, sad, affair there at Rushi and the kids bought into what was going on as well as the community and to look where they're at right now that's a credit to uh, Coach Cordonier and his staff and the athletic department and the community of Rushi. Stepping to the free throw line number 20 Zeb Schultz can't connect on the first second shot is up this one is no good as well Dosick pushes up ahead to Meyer. He lets the three-pointer go, and he can neck. J.J. Meyer has a tremendous shot. He has had three three-pointers tonight, and they have all looked great leaving his hand. Let's take a look at some of the other substitutions that come into the game. Number four, Ross Feisinger. Number five, Jackson Grogan. We'll see uh, number 41, Dominic Francis into the game as well, as is number 50, Colby Molden. Jackson Grogan at the free throw line. Minute two left to go. He can't connect. Just take a look at that three-point try, and that is just a beautiful shot. Oh, it is, yeah. Hands he, extended, follow yep. through. Great 
rotation on the basketball. You, know, you see, we see a lot of shots, some that go in, some that don't, but that may be one of the prettier shots, and he's very consistent. He will be a good shooter for this team for you know, the uh, upcoming years. A couple more substitutions coming in. And Bobkins now is going to empty their bench. See number 33, Corey Kane come into the game. Number 31, Carson Brown. Number 34, I don't have on my score sheet. That's Russell Lenhart. Thanks, partner. And we also have number 14, Grant Flora, in for the Trojans. Under a minute left to go. Hodkins still playing hard as both teams have put their benches in here as the Rushi Raiders are inching closer to that sectional title. They'll move on to the district down at UD Arena where they hope in a few weeks they will be back playing for that state title. Definitely a luxury to be able to play your district game there, huh? Take a look at the upcoming schedule in WSN. We said we're busy, and all of these games we will bring to you. Boys sectional final, Miller City Crestview, Columbus Grove, Spencerville, Liberty Benton, Cary. That should be a tremendous matchup. St. John's, Pandora, <laughs> get, a look at, <laughs> get a look at the freshman from St. John's. I haven't had a chance to see him yet, but I've heard nothing but good things. That district final tomorrow in Elina for the girls basketball, OG oh, Delphus oh Jefferson, an Ottawa Glandor team that is just chomping at the bit to make another trip down to UD. That Jefferson team, though, a 23-1 season as they hope to get that continued. That's going to be a tremendous matchup as well. All jokes aside, the Elida Fieldhouse is going to be packed for that girls contest. Yeah. OG is going to bring them, and so will the Lady Wildcats of Jefferson. Final eight seconds of this one clicks away. Rushi just going to dribble out the clock as they get ready to celebrate their sectional championship. The Rushi Raiders come to Piqua and they knock off the Botkins Trojans 53-38, and they are your sectional champions. We will step aside, and when we come back, we'll have tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner. We'll be back on WOSA. Welcome back to Piqua High School. We're we'll be being joined by Rushi's head coach. And coach, congratulations on the victory tonight. You know, it was a tough victory tonight, but what was the message at halftime? You guys kind of got off to a slow start there, but they came out in that third quarter and really got things going. Yeah, I mean, we, we did start slow. Uh, they played zone the first half, um, and we hadn't seen it a ton. It didn't shock me that, they, that the, that's what they'd done. Um, but, you know, the halftime message wasn't anything other than we need to move the basketball. You know, we're standing with it too long. You know, our game is, is you know, getting downhill with it and getting the basketball moving and sharing it. You know, these guys have been playing together for a long time, and they, they're still pretty young, you know, sophomores and juniors and, and, and a few seniors, but it was move the basketball and get it moving. And uh, we'll create open looks for ourselves, and, and we knock down some shots. So. You know, Bobkins has a superstar player in Carter Plyman on the other side. What's the strategy coming into the game to try to neutralize him? And he got some points, but it, you know, never allowed really Bobkins to get going and kind of get that momentum. Yeah, um, he's a fantastic player and, and can do a, a lot of different things with the basketball. So, you know, we tried to mirror what we did the first time or the second time we played him about three weeks ago at Bobkins, where we, I think we held him to eight. And uh, I don't know what he had tonight, 12 or 13, but, you know, that's five, six, or seven below his average. And, you know, if you can do that, then you can neutralize them. You know, they ask him to do a lot. And, you know, they bring the ball up before he guards one of our better players. So, you know, hats off to him. He's had a great career. Um, and, uh, you know, we just try to do our best to keep length on him and be in our gaps. And, and for the most part, we did that. So looking forward, not quite sure yet who you're going to play next, either Cedarville or Springfield Central Catholic. How do you guys think you match up against either one of those teams? Uh, I, I mean, I've seen them both. I've seen them both twice now. Um, Cedarville is kind of like us, and they're fairly guard-oriented. Um, you know, their point guard's very, very good, and very, very skilled. Um, and, you know, and Springfield Catholic has the uh, Luch kid that. I don't know, averages 23, 24 a game, and he's a handful. And they got another big kid that, that you know, does a lot for them too as well. So 
they got the couple six four guys and a few guards. Uh, you know, it'll be it'll be a dog fight fight just like tonight was. So um, whoever it is we play, we'll go see him tomorrow and we'll come up with a plan and we'll go with it. All right, well, we appreciate the time, Coach. Congratulations on the victory. We hope to see a lot more of your games on the road to Dayton. All right, thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Being joined back by my broadcast partner and, and Gil, you heard Coach, you know, it, they just had to get back to moving the basketball. The offense really did get off to a slow start. They struggled. It was just a 19-19 game going into halftime but they just needed to get back to what they did well, and they did exactly that coming out of the locker room. Well, I think they, like you said, and he talked about at halftime, there, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of discussion other than play Rushi basketball. And you've got to give Botkins a lot of credit. That 2-3 matchup zone early on presented a lot of challenges and problems for Rushi, but they did what they do best, and that's get deflections, get steals, break it out, play the full length of the court, and they got that lead extended, and. They started dribble driving, and once they start dribble driving and dishing off, and you know we looked at the stat sheet, they average almost 12.8 assists per game and turned over 9.5 opportunities per game. That's a winning combination if you can do that. But it's like he said, it's not going to get any easier, you know, as as we start chipping away and get to the district and to, to the regional level. You got to you got to be playing high caliber basketball, and the second half they did that. Rushi gets past their first couple of challenges as they move on and get closer to UD Arena to hopefully play for that state championship. That is going to wrap things up from here for Piqua High School. I'd like to thank our entire crew, everybody back in the truck, everybody working the cameras. We appreciate everything that you guys do for us. One final time for Darren Gilbert, I'm Nate Garlock. Thanks for tuning in and have a great night, everybody.